Hello everyone! This is a quick tutorial for lip syncing your characters in Blender. Lip syncing is an essential part of animating any character that has dialogue, and animating the mouth of each syllable of each word can be a tedious task. Luckily, Blender provides several features that make this process easier. To demonstrate lip syncing, I'm going to be using a model from the Human Base Meshes provided by Blender Studio which are available under the Creative Commons license, although this technique should work with any model. After we import our model, we need to create a rig for the body. Since this video isn't going to be about general rigging, I'm speeding through the setup. I'll be using Rigify, although any rigging system should be fine. If you are using Rigify, make sure to press the button to upgrade the face rig so that you have access to the more advanced bone set. I'm also going to be adding a tongue and teeth. While not strictly necessary, they can help with mouth expressions, especially distinguishing L and N sounds from other mouth poses. If you decide to use them, make sure to bind them properly to the teeth and tongue bones of your mesh. Alright, our rig is generated and we're ready to move on to creating the mouth positions. Let's create a new window here that we're going to put our mouth chart in. Set that to image editor, click the open button, and we're just going to browse to our chart so we have a reference when we actually create the mouth poses. Uh, next look up here at the action editor. By default uh, this, has, this is set to all, which shows our entire library. We don't want that, we want to restrict it to just the assets in the current file. So we select current file, and you can see I already went ahead and created some um, directories in here. You can create your own directory by just clicking the plus button and renaming that to whatever you want. But uh, for our purposes, we're going to be using this mouth positions folder to put our mouth positions in. Next, we're going to want to hide some of the bones we don't need. You can see right now we have uh, several bones uh, visible. Uh, I'm, because I'm using Rigify, Rigify comes with these buttons that allow you to add and remove groups of buttons easily. Uh, because we're just going to be animating the mouth, we're only going to be interested in the face bones. So let's click Primary and Face so that uh, those are highlighted. But uh, even so, uh, you can see that there's a lot of bones here we're still not going to need. We're not going to be needing the eyes at all, and uh, we're not going to need the nose either. Uh, so we're going to hide those. And uh, there's good reason for this, uh, because you, know, uh, you want to make sure you actually do not animate the eyes and the nose when you create your mouth position, because otherwise, when you switch to that mouth position, you're going to be changing the eyes and the nose too, which is probably not what you want. So to hide these, I'm just going to Go into side view, click and drag, and press letter H to hide them. And uh, let's get the nose there too, uh, H to hide those. And uh, we're not going to want the ears either, so let's hide those. And these bones that are left, these are probably the few that we actually want to create the mouth poses with, so we'll uh, leave these here. Uh, one more thing we're going to want to do is drag this up and we're going to want to change the timeline to the dope sheet. And then we're going to click the dope sheet drop down here and change the action editor. Because technically mouth poses are actions, so we need to have the action editor up in order to, in order to create them. Uh, bring your mouse down here, press letter N to bring up the side menu, and this button down here, the create pose asset, 
is wh what we're going to be using to actually create the mouth poses themselves. Uh, when we click this button here, it's going to put our pose into the uh, action library up here, or the asset library up there. So now that we're all set up, click and drag all our bones to select them, and click, uh, press Create Pose Asset, and bam, our pose is now in the uh, editor. Now you can see, first we created a neutral rest pose, uh, this is going to be what uh, the mouth looks like when everything is closed and you're not speaking at all. Uh, this is the last one on our chart, and uh, I decided to create it first though because we're going to be coming back here several times as we create the different mouth shapes. Uh, you can see right now though it's named Rig and the thumbnail is very zoomed out. You probably want to fix that. So uh, press the letter N key when you're in the asset browser to bring up this side menu. You can change the name by coming up here and changing the word rig to rest for the rest pose. And to fix the thumbnail, let's come back here into the uh, asset browser. Let's come change to object mode and press number, numpad zero, which is going to zoom us to a position where we're looking through the camera of the scene. Uh, now click on the view tab and lock the camera to the viewport. Now, if we don't do this, and we just uh, navigate through the viewport, then this isn't going to affect the camera at all. We're just going to be looking at our model from different positions. But if you press numpad zero and then click on camera to viewport, just drag that out a little bit. Now, when we reposition ourselves in the, view in the viewport, uh, this affects the camera as well. You can press N to hide the side panel. And we're just going to come in close here so that we can see the mouth. And now to regenerate the thumbnail, we're just going to click on the arrow circle over here, and that is going to redo the thumbnail. And let's just uh, reposition this a little bit more so that we're closely got a very tight shot on the mouth so that we can clearly see what it's doing. And I think that looks good. So now that we're done positioning the camera, let's press N to bring up the side panel again. Click off camera to view. And now we can move around to the viewport again, and we're not tracking the camera with us. Okay, well, we have one mouth pose done already, the resting pose. Let's move on to this AEI pose. So we're going to come back here to uh, make sure to click on the rig, go back into pose mode. And now we're gonna position the bones so that they match that mouth position. And we can just move the bones up and down by dragging them in the viewport using the regular keys you're used to. Um, you might want to use symmetric mode. Uh, just click on the X here so that when you move one bone, it's going to affect the other side of the mouth too. All right, that's a fierce grin there. And uh, we're also gonna open the jaw a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit too extreme. But at this point, you're just playing around with the... keys until they're in approximately the right position. There is a good uh, positioning for the A. And uh, let's move the tongue up a little bit. Oh, no, that was the bottom teeth. Uh, this is, that's the tongue bone there. Okay, that looks good. So now that we're happy with these bones, we're going to select them all. And then we are gonna come back down here to our action editor and create another pose asset by clicking on the create pose asset. And there we have it, a new pose asset in our asset library. Let's rename it right away so we don't forget what it is. And uh, yeah, there, there it is. And uh, if we want to then move on, let's do the L next. Uh, I'm gonna double click on rest, which is going to reapply that pose. So you see the mouth just snapped back to the rest position. Now for an L, 
we're going to want to open the mouth slightly. The L has the tongue raised, so let's bring the tongue all the way up. And uh, let's see, I think we're gonna, we're even gonna need to rotate that a little bit. Let's uh, press Shift Z to go into wireframe, just so we can see the internals a little bit better. Gives us a better view of what the tongue looks like. And let's raise the corners of the mouth slightly. All right, that should be good. And let's select everything again and create a pose asset. And let's name that L. And that's the same process for all of these. Uh, just double click on rest to go back to the rest position. Uh, move the bones around to get your next mouth pose. And when that's all done, select everything and create pose asset to create your next pose. Here's a sped up view of the entire mouth pose creation process. I'm also creating some extra expressions like eye blinks that we'll be using in our final animation. Finally, I'll add a simple animation to the model itself so we have something to build upon when we do the lip sync. All right, now we're all set up and ready to start lip syncing. First thing we're going to want to do is bring in our audio file. In order to do that, we're going to come up here and click on the plus sign, uh, go down to video editing and click on that to create a new tab for video editing. This is where we're going to import our sound. Uh, I'm going to put the mouse down here in the bottom section and press shift A and click on sound. And then we can browse to the folder that has our recording. I'm going to use a um, recording that I found on LibriVox that has a woman named uh, Anusha reading poetry from D.H. Lawrence. And if we click on display waveform in the uh, window over here, that makes the actual sound show up on the uh, timeline. And if we press play. The Prophet from Amores by D.H. Lawrence. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayya. Ah, uh, my... All right, and that just plays the audio. Now, we're not going to want this first section here. Uh, we want just the performance, which is this middle bit. So we're going to click on there, highlight that white bar, and drag that in to uh, cut off that first section. And uh, same. Th we're also going to reposition that so that starts right at the very start of uh, the playback. And uh, we're also going to want this end bit here. Now, if you see this light gray next to this slightly darker gray, this sort of indicates the end of the, um, the playback. We're going to want to move that a little bit further down. So if I put the playhead over here and press Control N, that's going to change the ending position for animation. So you can see we just added quite a few more frames to the uh, animation there. And if you want to see this in uh, frames as opposed to time, you can press Control T and it will uh, sh show the playback in terms of frames instead of seconds. Uh, now, if you come to the end of the audio and keep playing. Dying her fecund embraces. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Okay, we don't want that last bit either, so let's grab the end handle and drag that in. And then that means that the end of our animation is going to be right there. I'm going to put the playhead at 505, press Control end and that is now the ending point of uh, the whole animation. And uh, okay, great, we've got the audio. Uh, now we need to sync the lips to uh, what is the playback over here. So to do that, we're going to click on the animation tab and set this up so that we can see the audio so that we can sync to it. Uh, in order to do that, let's create a 
new window. Just click there and drag up. This can be very tricky to actually click on correctly with the mouse, so be careful. And this new window, we're going to switch this to the video sequencer. And now we can see that uh, audio waveform we just brought in across the bottom there. And if we click and drag on that little bar there, that can make it a little bit bigger so that it's easier to see. Just drag that down again. Okay, and now when we play, we can see where we are in the timeline. Ah, uh, my darling. What? Okay, next we need to bring up the mouth poses. So let's change this tab over to the asset browser and let's click on the current file and let's go into the mouth, posi mouth positions uh, that we created earlier. And now, if we just look a little bit closer at the mouth, we can double click. Sorry, we need to highlight everything first. So I'm going to press A to select all the bones. And now when we double click, that will snap us to the different mouth positions. And if you're having a little bit of trouble seeing because there are so many bones in the way, you can click that button to uh, hide the bones. That doesn't deselect them, it just makes them invisible to the viewport. And if you want them back on, you can just click that again to bring them back. All right. Uh, now, at the moment, we are moving the mouth, but we're not actually recording any kind of animation data uh, because we need to create a new action in our action editor. So let's create new. We're going to name this action dialog. Let's rewind to the first frame by clicking there. And now one last thing, we're going to click on this auto keying uh, button here. What this does is whenever we, when this is on, uh, the auto keying button is on, whenever we click on one of our mouse, mouth poses, that is going to be automatically recorded in our action. So uh, if we want to start on the rest, which is probably a good starting place, we'll double click there and you can see that got automa automatically inserted into our timeline. Now, if we play the playback, okay, you can see that the first word is aw. So we, that's going to start with an A sound. So actually, let's immediately proceed that with a rest. So the mouth stays closed up to that point. Then when we get to the A, we come up here and double click on there to get the A sound. And you can see that that opened the mouth and that added a key to our timeline. If we keep playing. And it turns into an H. We don't have an H uh, as one of our keys, so I'm just going to, going to ignore that. My uh, but then that's followed up next by my darling. So this is an M for my. So let's double click on M, the uh, M sound and the I. Uh, even though it's spelled with a Y, it's pronounced like it's an I sound. So we'll double click there to get the I. And then we have a D for darling. darling. So the A sound comes right about there. Uh, then an R, which is part of this CDG. I, this is also an R. I should have probably spelled out all the letters there, not just the first three. Uh, and then that gets us to an L, which is a very distinctive shape. So let's make sure we get the L in there. And then it finishes off with an NG sound. So let's put the N there. And you can see we then have a bit of silence. So let's key in the rest position. And now we have this, uh, her first phrase all mapped out. So let's rewind and play that back. My darling, when open, we can even see that from a different uh, camera position if we want to. Ah, uh, my darling, when over, and we're going to repeat this process for the rest of the frames, uh, for the rest of the audio here. Just um, move the playhead to where you want the word to be. Click on the mouth position you want to lock that into the timeline, and. Uh, if you uh, lock, if you create a mouth position in a place you don't want, so let's say 
we decide to put a th here and let's actually proceed that with a rest and uh, another rest there actually so I'm going to delete that by pressing the delete key all right so let's say so here's our th and let's say that we decided that we put that in the wrong place uh, if we want to move that just click the top um, node here then you can press the g key and move it back and forth and that's going to change when that th position occurs in your timeline uh, you can also do that just by clicking and dragging on it uh, if you put in a uh, symbol that you don't want so for example let's say we put a qw here and then we decide we don't want the qw we can just select that and press delete and it will uh, go away you can also press the x button that will do the same thing so if we put in a double e here and we can like move that over here if we want v but then we decide we don't want it again just select that you can also press the x delete those keyframes and that position is gone again and here's a sped up view of the entire process Push down the action we created and use Blender's NLA editor to arrange several action strips into a final animation. I'm also creating a separate strip for the motion of the body and a third for the eye blinks. The NLA editor allows me to layer these actions on top of each other so that they blend together, and it also makes it easy to make duplicates of the eye blinks so I can reuse that same action in many places. At this point, our animation is done. All that's left to do is render it and watch the final product. 
I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. Ah, my darling, when over the purple horizon shall loom the shrouded mother of a new idea, men hide their faces, cry out and fend her off as she seeks her procreant groom, wounding themselves against her, denying her fecund embraces.